The Shadows of Paris by Cyprian Jossen, Romance Audiobook, Chapter 4, Confessions In a charming café on Rue Saint-Michel in Paris, where the gentle buzz of conversation mixed with the scent of freshly brewed coffee, Guillaume sat opposite his wife, Ifioma. The setting was relaxed, with a few beams of June sunlight casting a warm glow on the small table near the window. After a brief pause, Ifioma gathered her thoughts before bringing up the topic she had been thinking about. Guillaume, there's something I've been thinking about, and I wanted to talk to you about it, Ifioma said smiling nervously. Sure, Ifioma. What's on your mind? Ifioma takes a deep breath. Well, you know how much I love you, right? Of course, my love. And I love you too. I was wondering, what if we explore the idea of a polyamorous relationship? Guillaume raises an eyebrow, polyamorous? Like having multiple romantic relationships? Yes, but with complete honesty, openness, and consent. I'm not suggesting anything that would hurt our relationship. It's just. I've been thinking, and I want us to be open to the possibility of connecting with others, with your consent, of course. That's quite unexpected, Ifeoma. But I appreciate your honesty. What brought this on? My former fiancé in Nigeria happens to be in Paris. I am confused now. I am married to you, and I still love him. Okay, I see. Your boyfriend is in Paris. What is his name? Aikyo Kike, she answered timidly. I admire your openness, my love. Let's talk more about it and see how we both feel. Communication is key and I'm willing to explore this with you as long as we're honest and transparent. Three days later, Guillaume and Aikyo Kike faced each other in the heart of the Luxembourg Gardens in Paris, where the atmosphere felt charged, akin to a love battle between two bulls. Aikyoma found herself torn between two men, one black and the other white. The trio settled near a stone table and bench surrounded by vibrant blooming flowers, and the occasional fluttering of pigeons added a natural backdrop to their discussion. Guillaume, a white Frenchman with graying hair, and Aikyo Kite, a Nigerian man with big eyes that held traces of a love covenant with Ifioma, confessed their passionate love for her. Now, the question lingered, who would emerge victorious in this cunning tug of war, especially when the men expected Ifioma to figure out how all three of them could live under one roof? So, we find ourselves in an unusual situation, don't we? Guillaume asked Aikyo Kike. His voice had the same tone he used when questioning suspects at the police station. Indeed, sir. I never imagined we'd be sharing a conversation like this, Aikyo Kike replied. I appreciate both of you being here. This is not easy for me, Ifeoma said, nervously rubbing her hands. Nor is it for us, Ifeoma. But we can't ignore what we feel. Everything for you, Guillaume expressed. I've known Ifeoma for a long time. She is my first love. I sponsored her to come to Paris. We agreed to get married, but destiny changed our plans, Aikyo Kike explained. I can see that. And I've come to care for her in a way I never thought possible, Guillaume asserted. Ifioma, looking between the two men, said, This is why I wanted you both here. I felt torn between two worlds, two loves. We're not here to make you choose, Ifioma. Guillaume and I are two rivals, Aikyo Kike said softly. Guillaume, looking at Aikyo Kike, stated, We share a love for her, and we both want what's best for Ifioma. Ifioma, teary eyed, whispered, I never thought. Love has a way of surprising us. We're here because we care about you, and we're willing to find a solution, Guillaume said. Polyamorous relationships are against my tradition in Igbo land, that's just the problem here, Aikyo Kike said. In principle as a police officer, I hate seeing myself in this situation. But for my wife, anything goes, Guillaume declared. Ifioma, taking a deep breath, said, It's not what I expected, but it's a relief to know you both can tolerate me. Love comes in many forms. We're choosing to embrace it, even if it defies expectations, Guillaume retorted. Ifioma, smiling through tears, said, To love. And to us. Aikyo Kike's life changed when he first met Ifioma in Awari, Nigeria. 
Despite his initial involvement in sponsoring Ifioma's journey to Paris, destiny took an unexpected turn, and she ultimately betrayed him by getting married to Guillaume. Guillaume, seeming friendly, had a secret plan during their meeting. Using his role as a police officer, he plotted to cause trouble for Aikyo Kike, his romantic rival, through what looked like a routine identity check in the Paris metro transport system. On a brisk morning in Paris, amidst the bustling metro Chatelet, where people hurried about their day, Aikyo Kike moved through the crowd, heading to see Mama D'Amour, who had called him for assistance at the restaurant. Little did he know that Guillaume had set up a trap to exploit his vulnerable immigration status. Guillaume, dressed in his police uniform, discreetly observed Aikyo Kike's movements. As Aikyo Kike entered the metro station, Guillaume signaled to his colleagues strategically positioned nearby. The plan was carried out with meticulous precision. Lost in his thoughts, Aikyo Kike didn't notice anything unusual until he felt a firm hand on his shoulder. Startled, he turned to face a stern-faced police officer. Identity check, the officer declared, scrutinizing Aikyo Kike's identification documents. The unforeseen danger orchestrated by Guillaume jeopardized not only Aikyo Kike's freedom, but also posed the threat of deportation to Nigeria. He managed to call Mama Damour and Ifioma to inform them that he had been arrested by the police before one of the officers confiscated his phone. Handcuffed like a criminal, Aikyo Kike was pushed into the police van, its siren blaring as it sped through red lights, to deposit him in a cell, awaiting immediate judgment and expulsion. The next morning, Aikyo Kike was brought to court to face judgment before four young magistrates, whose parents were immigrants but excelled in their careers. Abdullahi Mamadou was one of them, born into a Malian family residing in the banlieues of Paris. He was a brilliant student at La Sorbonne University, where he graduated as a law student. Later, he attended El Ecole de la Magistrature to become a judge. His parents, who had no formal education, worked menial jobs throughout their lives to educate him and his four brothers. None of them were born in France, their mother brought them to meet their father when they were just five years old. The second magistrate was Alice Keda, a young lady with a stern, tough face. Her parents also worked as cleaners on building sites, making it hard to read any emotion on her face. Another member was Oyima Ugu, born into a Nigerian family. Among his mates in the Bonlius who sold drugs and grass, he chose to follow the values of his parents, who came to France as students but lacked marketable skills, leading them to take on menial jobs. Onima studied hard at the university to avoid resembling his father, who worked in a cold room until he died of a stroke early one morning, leaving his mother a widow with three children. Then there was Jaimel Mustafa, a genius among the best students in the magistrate school. He could quote new laws from the code penal, even when they were updated, and was known for his strict attitude when judging foreigners who went against French laws. The panel of judges faced Okia Kike and Maitre Alice Jose, an appointed lawyer assigned to him that morning. The presiding magistrate was Judge Jamal Mustafa. The court was in session, waiting for the court clerk to read the accusations against Aikyo Kike. Aikyo Kike Michael you are accused of breaking immigration laws in the French Republic. It's claimed that on June 25th, you were discovered without the required documents during a regular identity check in the Paris Metro transport system. Consequently, you're charged with illegal residence, which is deemed a risk to public order. The prosecution argues that your immigration status breaches the laws governing the stay of foreigners in French territory. You are formally charged and the court will review the evidence against you. In the hushed courtroom, Maitre Alice Jose, Aikyo Kike's defense lawyer, rose to plead his case. She addressed the court with a measured yet impassioned tone. Your honors, esteemed members of the court, today I stand before you to advocate for my client, Okia Kike Michael, who finds himself ensnared in a situation that has dire consequences for his future in this country. Aikyo Kike Michael is currently undergoing the due process of seeking asylum, a legitimate avenue that affords him the right to remain in France while his case is under consideration. I would like to bring to the court's attention that my client is not a criminal, nor has he engaged in any illicit activities during his stay in the French territory. He has been a law-abiding resident, diligently adhering to the regulations governing his temporary stay. Aikyo Kike Michael has been gainfully employed, 
having secured a job promise from a reputable restaurant owned by Mama Damour, a well-respected member of the community. Furthermore, your honors, Aikyo Kike Michael has shown his commitment to integrating into French society. He has forged attachments, both professionally and personally, that reflect his genuine desire to contribute positively to this community. The notion that he poses a threat to public order is unfounded and contradicts the very principles that govern the asylum-seeking process. I implore the court to consider the unique circumstances of my client's situation. He is in the process of seeking asylum, a process that involves thorough examination and evaluation. To subject him to the rigors of a criminal trial at this juncture would not only undermine the asylum process, but also strip him of the basic human right to a fair and just consideration of his case. In light of these facts, I humbly request the court to discharge my client from these charges. Let the asylum process proceed unimpeded, and let Aikyo Kike Michael continue his pursuit of a better life within the bounds of the law. Justice, in this instance, requires a tempered approach that respects the rights and aspirations of a man seeking refuge in a foreign land. Maitre Alice Jose then returned to her seat, her gaze fixed on the panel of judges, awaiting their response. Standing before the panel of judges, Aikyo Kike exuded a calm and composed demeanor. Despite the weight of the accusations hanging over him, he maintained a quiet resolve. When Judge Jamal Mustafa addressed him, inquiring if he had anything to say in response to the charges, Aikyo Kike spoke with a gentle and measured tone. Your honors, esteemed members of the court, I am grateful for this opportunity to address the accusations against me. I want to assure the court that I am here to cooperate fully, to provide any information necessary for a fair and just evaluation of my circumstances. I arrived in France seeking asylum, a process that I understand requires scrutiny and adherence to the laws of this land. I am not a threat to public order, nor have I engaged in any activities that would jeopardize the safety of this community. I have sought lawful employment, holding on to the promise of a job in Mama Damour's restaurant, where I aim to contribute positively to the society that has become a temporary home for me. I am well aware of the concerns surrounding immigration but I want to emphasize my commitment to following due process. I have respected the laws and regulations governing my stay, and I am confident that the asylum-seeking process will reveal the legitimacy of my claims. Your honors, I implore you to consider my case with the understanding that seeking asylum is not an attempt to evade justice, but a pursuit of safety and a chance for a better life. I am here, ready to cooperate, and I trust in the wisdom of this court to consider the complexities of my situation. Thank you. With that, Aikyo Kike respectfully lowered his gaze, awaiting the judge's response to his earnest plea. The judges left their seats for a deliberation that lasted more than 30 minutes. When they returned, everyone in the court stood up in honor of their duty. Maitre Alice Jose glanced at her client, who resembled a marble statue, bracing himself for possible deportation. Papa God, help me, Aikyo Kike prayed for mercy. After careful deliberation, Judge Jamal Mustafa delivered the judgment, stating that Aikyo Kike was to be discharged of all the accusations brought against him. The judge expressed dissatisfaction with the police for not conducting a thorough investigation, emphasizing the need for proper procedure and respect for the rights of individuals. He declared Aikyo Kike a free man, relieved of the impending threat of deportation. The courtroom buzzed with a mix of emotions, relief for Aikyo Kike, disappointment for some, and a renewed belief in justice prevailing. Okia Kike's resilience and the support of his defense lawyer, Maitre Alice Jose, played a vital role in securing a fair outcome. As the judge wrapped up the proceedings, Aikyo Kike once again glimpsed hope in a justice system that had initially seemed against him. Thank you, God, he shouted. Mama Damour, upon hearing the news of Aikyo Kike's discharge, let out a sigh of relief. The weight of worry she carried lifted, replaced by gratitude toward the justice system. The looming threat of deportation had been averted. It was a practical twist that could potentially alter the course of their strained relationship. Perhaps, this turn of events might serve as the catalyst for Okia Kike to consider marrying her. Aikyo Kike, my boy, I heard the news. They discharged you, didn't they? Mama Damour exclaimed. Yes, Mama Damour. The court ruled in my favor. 
no more deportation threat. Thank the heavens. I've been worried sick about you. You're like a king to me, you know. I appreciate your concern, Mama. It means a lot. Maybe this could be a fresh start for us. Maybe, just maybe. I never wanted harm to come your way, Aikyo Kike. Let's put this behind us. I'd like that, Mama. Thank you for being there, even when things were tough. Friends look out for each other, no matter what. Now, let's celebrate your freedom. I'll cook something special tonight. The revelation about Guillaume's secret actions hit Ifioma like a powerful wave, leaving her torn between conflicting emotions. Relief washed over her, knowing Aikyo Kike was safe, but confusion and anger took hold as she discovered the truth about Guillaume's involvement in his arrest. The delicate balance she had tried to maintain between the two men now teetered on the edge. Confronting Guillaume, Ifioma's voice quivered with a mix of disbelief and indignation. Guillaume, how could you? Her eyes once filled with trust, now bore the weight of betrayal. Guillaume, aware that his secret was no longer hidden, faced her with a mixture of guilt and defensiveness. He attempted to justify himself, saying, Ifeoma, I thought I was doing what was best for us. I didn't want to see you torn between two worlds, two men. His words, however, fell flat in the face of Ifeoma's growing frustration. What gives you the right to make decisions for me? Ifioma's anger simmered beneath the surface. You played with Aikyo Kike's life, with my emotions, all behind my back. Guillaume, grappling with remorse, struggled to find the right words. Ifioma, I love you, and I wanted to protect what we have. Aikyo Kike's presence complicates things. I thought. Ifioma, however, interrupted him with a sharp retort. Love doesn't justify deception, Guillaume. You didn't trust me enough to be honest, this is not how a marriage should be built. Her anger filled the room like a wounded lioness roaring. Ifioma's frustration turned into tears, reflecting the shattered trust she felt. Guillaume, realizing the seriousness of his actions, dropped his defensive stance and offered a heartfelt apology. Ifioma, I never wanted to hurt you. I see now that I made a grave mistake. Please, forgive me. Guillaume pleaded, but Ifioma, feeling betrayed, needed time to recover from the shock. In the quiet aftermath of Aikyo Kike's liberation, Guillaume found himself struggling with how to appease Ifioma and save their relationship. He felt guilty in his heart, haunting thoughts foretelling the consequences of planning Aikyo Kike's arrest. Fear, like the proverbial lizard, gripped his soul, for what was yet to come his way. I will fight for what belongs to me, he murmured. Since Guillaume's deceit has been exposed to the sunlight and the damning revelation of his misuse of authority, he was ashamed of himself because it was unlike him to put an African into trouble. He had always defended them, but for love gone awry, he decided to be a killer. However, he was in a fix when he saw himself in a love triangle, knowing too well that the lady he loved was in a big confusion. Aikyo Kike's release humbled his pride indicating a reckoning similar to the downfall of a once-proud police officer. It served as a reminder that France is a land of fairness, and the judicial system is designed to protect everyone. Ifioma had wanted a breath of fresh air. She decided to free herself from Guillaume's influence. She secured a job as a cook at a Parisian restaurant called La Toile de Paris, well known for serving authentic French cuisine. Situated in Montmartre, in the 18th arrondissement in the northern part of Paris, this restaurant was also a famous jazz venue. It held a special place in jazz history, attracting legendary musicians like Louis Armstrong. Armstrong, a jazz pioneer, found a receptive audience in Paris and became a beloved figure in the city. Other iconic jazz musicians, including Sidney Bechet and Coleman Hawkins, also enjoyed a warm reception in Montmartre. In the time between the two world wars, and particularly after World War I, Numerous black American musicians discovered comfort in the lively cultural environment of Montmartre. They were attracted to the open-minded atmosphere and the approval they received from the French, who valued their artistic contributions more than the color of their skin. The feeling of equality and acceptance these musicians found in Montmartre stood in sharp contrast to the racial segregation and discrimination that prevailed in the United States at that time. 
In Paris, they were seen as artists first, with their talent celebrated without the weight of racial prejudice. Ifeoma got this job with the help of her friend Marie Doris, who thought it would be good for her to stay active instead of just waiting at home for her husband's paycheck. However, Guillaume La Chase, her husband, didn't approve of her working as a waitress in a restaurant and jazz club simultaneously. This new job brought changes to their romantic moments, because she had to work late into the night and then rush to work again the next day. Save your marriage from the hands of a lover boy from Nigeria, sometimes, we have to sacrifice dear ones to move on in life. You have to forget Ikeokike and give your whole love to Guillaume La Chase, who loves you against all odds, advised Marie Doris. I can't forgive him, Ifeoma said. You are the problem, Ifeoma. How can you propose a weird relationship in your marriage? Marie Doris asked her. Ikeokike has been the one, she said. The one doing what in your life? He is better in bed than Guillaume. Listen to me, Ifeoma, love is blind, but when you marry him, your eyes will open. Guillaume is fifty years old, and you don't expect him to perform like Ikeokike, who is just twenty-six years old. So, what do I do now? I'm confused, Ifeoma retorted. It's simple. Stay in the marriage, Maridori said. As Ifeoma pondered Maridori's words, confusion overwhelmed her. The conflicting feelings and advice stirred a storm in her mind. Marie de Ries had a point about Guillaume, a man who married her against his parents' advice. Ikeokike seemed like an intruder, a distraction from the past attempting to cause trouble in her marriage. To gather her strength and heed her friend's advice, Ifeoma decided to move forward and leave the demons of the past, including Ikeokike, behind. She felt as light as a feather when Guillaume returned from work that evening. He brought her a bouquet of roses and some bars of chocolate, always the gentleman she had known since she met him. He was a passionate lover and wanted to protect what belonged to him, an ardent and protective lover, without showing any sign of it. He shielded her from Ikeokike by planning his deportation because he couldn't bear to share his wife with anyone. 